Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Shelley Malat from Cast and Crew Marketing. Welcome to the third installment of our webinar series, Creating the Digital Production Office. Cast and Crew Vice President of Product Marketing and Strategy, Ivana Malcolm and the team, will be taking you on a deep dive into Hours Plus and how you can say goodbye to paper time cards forever. Before I hand off to our speakers, let me remind you of a few things. If you do have any questions during the presentation, kindly type them into the Q&A box. Ivana and team will be addressing questions during the webinar. We'll also be providing a video recording to all who registered, so be sure to look for that link in your email. And now, Ivana, take us on a tour of Hours Plus. Will do, Shelley. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Last week, the team and I really enjoyed showcasing our Start Plus and Studio products, and more importantly, helping you learn about our systems and how to create a contactless process. We really appreciate your participation and grateful that you are taking time out of your day to join us again. And to those of you that are new to our series, welcome. As Shelly mentioned, this is the third installment of creating the Digital Production Office series. And we're going to focus on a critical and arguably most important product in the trifecta of payroll products, Hours Plus, our digital time card solution. In the market today, there are a few different solutions where an accountants handle timekeeping on a daily and weekly basis, working in the product themselves. However, this is still a paper heavy process as weekly timesheets and batches of time cards are passed back and forth. The game changer is that accountants will be working remotely now and thus creating the need and importance for a digital workflow. This is where Hours Plus comes in. And with that, I would like to introduce the team that will help bring Hours Plus to life today. Our product solutionist, Alex Baer, and his wonderful bow tie, and production accountant oh, relations, <laughs> Sarah Pickard. Welcome back, you two. Thanks, Ivana. Thank you for having us. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here for the webinar today and glad you could join us, too. Last week, we went over our digital onboarding product, Start Plus, which is where it all begins. Today, we'll take you on a tour of our digital time card, Hours Plus, to see how it can help you every day. In light of the current circumstances, it's not safe to come face-to-face -face with crew members or handle hundreds of paper time cards each week. The good news is, the workflow for time cards should and can be simplified. Our products team has been working hard to do just that. Enhanced capabilities, going mobile, and the positive environmental impact of less paper are all pretty awesome. But if we're being honest, the best part is not having to read crew handwriting anymore. So now I will hand it back to Ivana and we can get into how it all works. Thank you, Sarah. Um, that's a really great point. <laughs> so let's begin and show everyone how does Hours Plus work? Great, so to kick us off, crew members having been onboarded through Start Plus are invited into the system by either their department head, payroll accountant, and or reviewer, providing a lot of flexibility in order to facilitate quick use of the system. Once crew members are in the system, they can begin generating time cards for approval. Or alternatively, department heads or keys are able to generate time cards on behalf of the crew to approve. Once time cards are created, they flow through a specific workflow for final approval. Completed time cards are automatically separated and distributed in Cast and Crew Studio to designated folders. Processed time cards and batch reports are stored in Studio for easy search, store, and share capabilities. Alex will now walk us through the configurable approval workflow, highlighting the specific roles and permissions in the system. Take it away, Alex. Awesome, thank you, Ivana. Uh, so in Hours Plus, we do have uh, some configurable workflows for you, but the roles that we'll be seeing today are the uh, crew member who is able to create their digital time card, attach inventory lists or receipts to that time card. The department head who's able to review and approve that submitted time card, compare it to their production report, etc., cetera, uh, and then pass that time card to the payroll accountant who's able to approve those submitted time cards break those time cards, code those time cards, and run those hours to growth calculations. And finally, our reviewers. We can have a few reviewers after your uh, payroll accountant here. We'll just be showcasing the one today, uh, but we can add uh, custom reviewers there for you. 
Additionally, we do allow department heads the option to create time cards for their crew members to sign off on. And uh, the department head role is also optional. So you do not have to include that department head role in your setup. You can allow for crew members to submit their time cards directly to the payroll accountant. With that said, let's go ahead and take a dive into hours plus. Let's do it, Alex. Thank you so much. Hope for everyone brought that. their snorkel. Right? <laughs> 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 you caught me off guard with that. <laughs> that was really uh -oh. cool. No, right. no curveballs, no curveballs. No curveballs, please. <laughs> All right, everybody. So Alex is going to log in as the crew member into Hours Plus if one can remember his password, which is great to note that remembering your password is super important. <laughs> Always. Always. Probably the most, common, the most common item, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. All right. So we'll log in here. Now keep in mind, we'll land on this projects page. If we're a crew member that's working on multiple projects at the same time, we'll be able to see those projects listed out here. We'll choose our project we want to enter. And then we have a few different options. Very straightforward. We can create a time card, finish a time card, or view our time card history. Keep in mind that this crew member portion is uh, completable on mobile devices. So crew members are able to also complete this portion of their time cards on their mobile device. We'll go ahead and create a time card here. And we're actually gonna do it for next week because I've already sent through a time card for this week. So we'll send it for week ending 7-Eleven. We'll be able to choose our most valid occupation code here. If we have multiple occupation codes assigned to us, we would see them all listed here and we would choose the primary occupation code. Keep in mind that your payroll accountant later in the process can mix and match days on your time card to accommodate multiple occupation codes. So we're only gonna focus on the primary one right now. Finally, if a crew member has submitted a time card in the past, they do also have the option to copy their times from a previous week and indicate which week they would like to copy. For purposes of today, we'll go ahead and create a time card from scratch though. Here we'll come to our digital time card. We'll see defaulted work states and work cities for our department here. Keep in mind that we are able to default on a department by department basis for you. So if your production is working in multiple locations at the same time, we can accommodate that. We've seen some productions have an East Coast and West Coast unit, or sometimes you'll see post-production in LA, but you'll see physical production on location in Louisiana. We can set that up for you. You'll notice here we automatically display first meal out and first meal in columns, but you also have the option to be able to add additional meals to that. You can add a second meal and you'll see those columns up here as well as a third meal. We're going to intentionally incur some meal penalties today though, so we'll just leave a first meal option. We wanna show you how our time cards will break with those meal penalties. Additionally, we do have the ability to allow crew members to input their own account coding here by toggling this on. You'll notice that on this project, we have actually not enabled crew members to be able to edit account coding. So they don't have any account codes here that they can edit. We can restrict which account codes they are able to input, however. As we scroll down, we'll make sure that our worked days are days that we're going to add day types to are selected here, not always worked. We can always add by clicking a day or remove those days if they aren't applicable to us. We'll set it for a standard Monday through Friday work week though. As we scroll down, we'll choose our day type here. You'll notice a variety of options here. Obviously the most common is going to be worked. We do have a, a number of other options available for crew members for more niche scenarios. We'll automatically populate the work state and work city as uh, was set up above, though those can also still be changed further by the crew member. And then we'll enter our times. Like I said, we are going to intentionally incur some meal penalties here, so we'll make this a really long day. And once we're done, we do have the option to copy all of these times to all days but we can tweak those times if we'd like to as well. 
We can leave notes for our department heads, payroll accountants, and subsequent reviewers by adding the comment icon here. We can say something like, no break today. It reminds me of a commercial, something about not having a break today. <laughs> Uh-oh. I know, I know. Sorry, I'm, I'm taking us off, of course. Go ahead, Alex. No, no, that's fine. I just, I wish I knew the commercial so I could play off your reference. Now I'm, I'm without a joke. <laughs> that's just the age difference. It's okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're my older sister. All right, we'll keep going down here. <laughs> and uh, see our allowances here. Now you'll see a full list of allowances and reimbursements available on this project listed here. However, we are able to restrict what crew members are able to see. You'll notice we do have a lot of options here and we can, since we restrict these, or because we can restrict these for crew members, we can still expose them for payroll accountants. So oh, just because perfect. we eliminate this option, your payroll accountant can still use it, exactly. Exactly. That's actually one of the questions, Alex, that's coming through the live feed was whether or not that's oh. something that can be restricted for crew. Because we know we don't always want to expose a lot of information to crew and we want to just limit it to the, you know, top three items that they're familiar with. That's right. So we can absolutely do that. You go ahead and see that I can add an inventory list here from my computer as well. And once I've uh, added that, you can do the same with receipts, of course. Once I've added it, I can go ahead and hit my check box there to lock that reimbursement in for myself. And then I can keep scrolling. I can also leave notes on the time card in general if I wanted to say, um, remember a higher rate this week. Maybe I stepped up someone was sick, so we can go ahead and add that. And once everything looks good, you'll notice I do have a couple options at the bottom. I can choose to delete my time card, which we're obviously not going to do right now. But I can also save my work if I wanted to come in and update my times daily. Or once I'm ready to submit this time card, I can hit the submit button. At this point, if you joined us for the Start Plus walkthrough, you'll actually notice a commonality here. We will uh, ask for an, uh, a signature from the crew member, a digital signature from the crew member. This actually is any <laughs> case sensitive, case sensitive, and Absolutely. then we'll go ahead and hit approve. That's great. At this point, our time card will appear in our history tab. And We're able to see a history of that, right? Yeah, like sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt, but they yeah. can always access their previous time cards and and uh, and look at those for future reference. Correct. Absolutely. You'll see here actually a uh, time card this crew member already submitted this week. It was for a partial week because their start date was on Wednesday. We actually denote days before their start date with an asterisk and will not allow them to submit a time card with uh, before their start date. And they're able to see that history and they can even see the full approval flow here uh, that that time card went through before being submitted to cast and crew. That's great. Excellent. So I think at this at this time, Sarah, we have a couple of questions that we can take from um, from our audience. Yeah, I see those rolling in. It's great. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> uh, so the first one I have here for you, Ivana uh, or Alex, do you need to use Start Plus in order to use Hours Plus? Um, I'm happy to take that one. Um, you can use Hours Plus with Start Plus or you can use Hours Plus on its own. Um, that is flexible depending upon what you need for your production. Okay, great. Um, kind of following up on that, is Hours Plus live and ready to be used immediately? The answer is yes, Peggy, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wonderful. Uh, Patrice has a question. Um, can you enter hours daily? Alex, would you like to take that yeah. one? Absolutely. Crew members can enter their times daily if they'd like. It would make their time card. And then they would be able to, each day of the week that they work, be able to type in their days. And they can save that work and come back throughout the week. 
That's great. So they can save it and then always come back and continue entering that in. Correct. They would actually just come over here to the finish tab. Yep. And they'll see here that time card created for themselves and they can go back and keep editing it as they see fit until they're ready to submit it. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Alex. Um, so Nicholas would like to know, most of the crew will have department heads, but some won't. Can we selectively turn off department head reviewer for individual users? Ooh, that's a good Alex question. Yeah, absolutely. So we can't turn it off on a user by user basis. We can figure it at a department level. So we can assign department heads to a specific department, or we can leave the department head off of some departments. So that way, if a department doesn't have a department head or you don't need that department head to be part of your approval flow, we can leave it out for that department. All right, great. Uh, Ivana, I think our anonymous attendee. <laughs> I love it because Ooh. this is so great. I'm, I'm about to show my age though. So thank you, Anonymous. It, it was a McDonald's commercial. Give mom a break today. And I think it was in the, in the late 70s or early 80s. So thank you, Anonymous. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody out there knows what I was referring to. <laughs> yes, we are covering the important stuff today and that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, yeah. I think we have, a, we have time for uh, one or two more questions, Sarah. Okay, great. Um, so another anonymous attendee was wondering about entering hours with military time. Uh, that is a configurable setting on your project. We can set your project up to have uh, military time uh, set as its default as opposed to uh, the, the standard 12 hour clock that we see. Okay. Perfect. And then I think you said we have time for one more, Ivana? Yeah, I think a couple more we have. Perfect. So Carla would like to know, can a crew member enter times for their entire department, like best boys, loaders, etc.? Yes. And we'll actually be going over that in just a minute on our next portion when we get to the department head role. Uh, so we'll be able to look at that in a little more detail and how you would do that uh, in the next, uh, next portion of our walkthrough. Oh, perfect. Well, then we'll do that in a minute. Uh, and then one question from an anonymous uh, attendee. How long does it take to have cast and crew hours plus ready for a project to use? That's a great question. Um, so hours plus is relatively quick for us to implement. We typically quote a three to five day turnaround time uh, based on, you know, how, how many we have. But hours plus is relatively quick to do that as long as um, we have the project set up in payroll. Okay, great. Let's see. And then uh, James, wonderful James, was asking, um, oh, they're all moving here. He said, if somebody puts in uh, the wrong time, um, are you able to change that later? Like if a department head or, or someone enters the wrong time, can that be adjusted later? Alex, That's a you great question. It? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, you take it. Absolutely. So once a crew member uh, finishes their time card and submits it, we do lock those times on the time card. You are able to reject that time card back to the crew member if they need to fix any of their times, but we do this very intentionally. Because we're getting an electronic signature from the crew member uh, saying that these are the hours that they worked, in order to maintain the, legal, uh, the legality of that uh, electronic signature, we actually cannot allow you to edit those times after the crew member. They would need to have that time card rejected to them. They could fix whatever those uh, errors are or, ch or changes are, and then they would be able to send it back down the chain. Keep in mind that other things like day type or occupation code, though, are configurable and changeable by your payroll accountant later down the line. All right. Fantastic. Thank you, Alex. All right. I think that's it for the crew member. Alex, you're going to take us into the department head role, right? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> and so one of the things while Alex is logging in, the department head is a configurable uh, part of the system, meaning you can have a department head and or not have a department head in the approval workflow. We can set it so that it's just a one-to-one -one relationship between the payroll accountant and the crew member. 
So this is an optional role should you desire to have it in your workflow. Correct. Uh, upon logging in as our department head here, we'll come to our ready for review tab. This is uh, sort of our actions needed tab. You can think of it as we'll see here our batch for production with our two time cards in it that we're looking to approve. We're going to go ahead and approve those in just a minute, but I do want to talk about uh, some of our other functionalities that uh, department heads can do first. Department heads are able to invite their crew to the project by coming to the crew hire list and inviting their users. Here they'll be able to select any uh, deals that are active on the project. You'll see them appear on this drop down. So this means that if a deal has been completed in Start Plus or if it has been keyed in by your payroll coordinator, your crew member will appear in your Hours Plus project as available. So once again, you don't need to use Start Plus. You can just use Hours Plus and you'll see those crew members once they're keyed in up here on this drop down for you. You can select that crew member, give us uh, their email address, and then choose a department. Keep in mind that the department you choose for your crew member uh, will dictate what their time card approval flow is. So if you choose a production department for this person, they'll follow the production time card approval flow path. Whereas if we had, uh, chose something like an office staff department, that would go through the office staff approval. Once ready, we can go ahead and click invite to invite Lenny to the project. Additionally, department heads are able to create time cards. This was our question that we had earlier for, uh, for their crew. We'll go ahead and do it for a week in the future. We'll see a list of our available crew members that we can create time cards for. If everyone's worked the exact same times and is getting the exact same reimbursements on this time card that we're going to submit to them, we can choose to select all of them at once. However, we can also group them. So if Corey and Paris here had identical times, we could draft up their group time card. And if Cameron's times were different, we could then do a new group time card for Cameron. We'll hit create group time card. We'll see a list of available occupation codes for crew members and be able to toggle between them if there are multiple available. And once we're ready, we'll hit create group time card. And you may recognize the look of this page here. It looks just like our crew member view. We'll list up the crew members who are receiving this time card at the top and you can always take one of them off if you needed to. However, everything else from this point on is going to be just like the crew member portion. We'll be able to choose our day types, We'll be able to choose our call times, et cetera. Department heads can also be permission to be able to set account codes on a project. You'll notice on this project, we have not enabled that for the department heads, but we do have that as an option as well. We can restrict that to be different than what uh, crew members see as available account codes as well. So we could say crew members aren't allowed to uh, enter any coding, but if a department head is drafting a time card for them, department heads are allowed to enter something like a set coding. We'll be able to add any reimbursements. Keep in mind, we'll only want to add reimbursements that are going to uh, be going to all of the crew members here in this, uh, in this path. Keep in mind, payroll accounts can add those case by case reimbursements on a time card by time card level. And once we're ready, you'll notice we have two different options down at the bottom here. We can submit this time card to our crew members to sign off on. So we'll submit to employees. If we hit submit to employees, this time card will go to the crew members finish time card tab. That crew member will be able to log in and accept that time card and push it straight to the payroll accountant. However, if a crew member felt the need to edit their times for some reason beyond what the department had drafted for them, they can edit those times, but the time card will be routed back to the department head for approval before going to our payroll accountant. Furthermore, you'll notice this button here that says submit emergency time card. The submit emergency time card option is something that is available as a permission for department heads, but generally we see it more often on the payroll accountant side. Payroll accountants, keep in mind, can draft to group time cards for all of their departments. And the emergency time card option will allow them to create a time card and bypass that crew member consent. 
keep in mind that because we are bypassing the crew member signing off on this, they will be asked for a reason for why you are creating an emergency time card that week. Uh, but this allows you to have the flexibility in the event that maybe a crew member has lost internet access unexpectedly. Maybe they're out in the swamps of Louisiana and can't fill out their time card and they're stuck in the mud and they can't get to it and they need some extra help. This will allow you to uh, be able to still get that uh, time card pushed through and paid on time. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and approve our time cards, though, that we started our um, walkthrough with. You'll notice here we have two different time cards at our level as the department head here. We're able to see Cameron and Corey's time card. We can do a bulk approve of these time cards if we don't expect to have any issues with them and just hit the approve button here. We can also reject a specific time card if we wanted to. Maybe our, the times didn't match the production report. Keep in mind, if you'd like to view the times though, we'll want to go a little further into the review time card tab here. When entering the review time card tab, we'll be able to see the time card as filled out by the crew member. Keep in mind this time card was generated before our walkthrough today, so you'll see it's a little different than Cameron's. We're able to see our times here. We're able to also note that the crew member added this note, remember higher rate this week, maybe this person also st uh, stepped up because someone was sick. And if we'd like to, we can leave a note letting our payroll accountant know that the higher rate is okay, so we can say something like higher rate approved. And add that to our time card. Payroll accountants will be able to see a record of who left which notes with timestamps, so they'll be able to see exactly the sequence of what is approved and what's not and if they might need to hold on to a time card before processing, or if they're good to keep processing it as is and send it down the chain. We'll go ahead and approve Corey's time card here and send that along, and then take a look at Cameron. Cameron is the time card that we started our walkthrough today with. We're able to see that there were no breaks this day. We could leave a comment saying something like, no breaks were anticipated. and we can add that to our time card. We'll also see the reimbursement that the crew member added here. We could always reject this offer if maybe this is one of uh, our crew members who shouldn't be getting a box rental and shouldn't be selecting that option. Otherwise, if it looks good, we have an inventory list here. We can even download the supporting document if we'd like. I think I'm just getting a slight delay with my connection here. We'll be able to showcase that download at a later step then. Let's, but all of your steps will be able to download that inventory list and then we'll be able to approve. And that covers our department head portion of the walkthrough. Uh, do we want to open up the floor for any department head related questions? Uh, yes, and we have a mix and match of questions that, that are still coming in from, the, from uh, the crew, which is fine. We're happy to answer them. So Sarah, will you lead the way? Yeah, let's start tackling those now. So Christina asked, if a crew member has uploaded an inventory list, which we were just referring to, uh, to mycastandcrew.com account, do, does she have to attach it every week? That's a really great question. So um, I think it has to do, Alex, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, that if you attach it every week to the box rental, that determines whether or not it's going to be taxable or non-taxable, correct? Correct. So if you're choosing a non-taxable option, in most cases, we'll require some sort of extra supporting documentation, not in every single case, but in most cases. Uh, so yes, if the non-taxable option was chosen, we would um, request that supporting document from you. But if the taxable option was chosen, we would not require that document. Great. Thanks, Copy. Alan. Okay. So Stephen would like to know, uh, I was in the middle of production when we shut down. Can we use the IELTS? excuse me, online products when we restart? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes, um, especially hours plus, because if you had several crew members that were onboarded prior to this event and are in our payroll system, we can easily turn on hours plus, they'll recognize the crew members and you can move forward utilizing hours plus for your production. And then any new hires you wanted to utilize start plus, 
you can just move forward with that as well. Awesome, that's great. Uh, Taylor is wondering, how would you address a re-rate on a time card? Hey Taylor, um, yes, a re-rate is handled um, through the production account or the, the payroll accountant role. Um, and Alex is gonna go ahead and showcase that in our next, um, in our next role that we're gonna bring up in just a few. Okay, so we'll stay tuned for that. Okay, okay. let's see. Uh, what else? Stephanie had a question, I know. Um, following up on NDB, can the crew member enter the NDB rather than the payroll accountant? Great, Alex, you wanna take that? Crew, absolutely, a crew member can indicate an NDB on their comment section of their days. So they could, when they're creating their time card, hit the little comment icon and note that NDB. We are able to accommodate NDBs from an on and off, yes or no scenario, and we can also accommodate NDBs with a set time range as well. Okay, sounds good. Um, Marianne would like to know, how can I add comments on the time card for the payroll coordinator at Cast and Crew to see? Ooh, that's a great question, which we're also gonna get into on uh, the next portion of our call. So Marianne, just sit tight for me just a second and we will show you exactly how to do that in the next chapter here. All right, covering it all. Um, okay, so Amy would like to know, what about time cards for exempt employees? Uh, my, my question is, what about them? <laughs> <laughs> they can do time cards, cards too, Alex, right? They yes, can, they can. They, can. <laughs> they absolutely can. And they can, they can just mark on their time cards their day type. They can put day type works, idle, home on an accord, whatever uh, might be applicable at that time and uh, submit their time card without any in and out time. Fantastic. And I think we got one more, Sarah. Okay, great. So um, Lyndon is wondering, will there be a tutorial like this for our department heads to go teach themselves this system? Absolutely. Um, we have a couple of uh, ways that you can do that. One, we do have videos um, specific to how to create time cards, how to approve time cards. Also, prior to going live on your production, we, we do provide training, um, both on a produ you know, project level, but also um, multiple times during the week. So we will absolutely communicate those um, as you get geared up for your production. Okay, great. All right, I think we have one more from uh, Stephanie here, and then we can uh, move on to the next. Okay, great. Let's see, is this the, okay, so if we need to revise the box amount because the employee wrote it incorrectly, does it need to go back to the employee for signature? Uh, no, you will be able to revise the rate itself on the box rental uh, as needed as the payroll accountant role, which we're, once again, we'll showcase here in the next portion of our walkthrough. Yep, and then there's just a one more quick one, Sarah, too, and I think it's Lyndon again. It says, if a time card does get rejected, does the crew member get an email stating mm -hmm. that it needs to be revised? So, Alex, I think this is part and parcel with what you just also mentioned. Yep, uh, crew members are defaulted, uh, opted in for notifications for uh, rejected time cards. So, if their time card specifically is rejected, they'll receive an email for that. <laughs> Keep in mind, crew members do have the ability to configure those notifications and turn them off as well. So if a crew member doesn't receive an email invite, it's likely that they'll wanna go into their uh, profile settings here. They'll go to their profile details, their preferences, and then they can configure <coughs> their notification options. So keep in mind that the notification options you have for each of the roles, uh, crew member, department head, payroll accountant, and reviewer are slightly different based on the actions that they can take but crew members are able to configure that as well. Yep, there's a lot of options there, which is great because you know once you start getting those notifications, you want to be able to um, select what you want to be notified for. After a while, it might get a little intense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> depending on your role, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. If it were me and I was the UPM, I would not want to get that many uh, notifications. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think um, we've answered a bunch of questions. Um, Alex, have we exhausted the department head role? Let's do it. Let's get into the uh, payroll accountant now. All right, fantastic. So we're going to log in. We love a good login. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
Man, if I had a nickel for every login. <laughs> All right. So we'll see here uh, a few different of our batches that we have. We'll even see on our uh, time card that we had drafted and saved for Cameron and the employee portion there uh, for week ending 718 is incomplete because he's filling it out day by day. Uh, so we, we see that notification letting us know that it's incomplete here. We're able to see all of our different batches. We're also able to take a few different actions before we start breaking our time cards. If you'll notice here, I'm going to just collapse these other batches so we can focus on uh, week ending 7-11 for production here. We see here that we have an incomplete time card from Paris, but we have complete and ready to review time cards from Corey and Cameron. Because we're still waiting for Paris, uh, we can think of Paris as one of our straggler time cards. So if we want to go in and start approving this batch, we can split out Paris's time card here by going to the move time cards option. What this will allow me to do is to move Paris's time card into a new batch. I can call it stragglers. So that way Paris, who is uh, holding, holding himself up or herself up, is not going to hold up uh, Corey or Cameron's uh, processing on their time cards. So you'll see here, we've moved Paris's time card into the stragglers batch. We're also able to put a soft lock on a batch. What that means is that typically your uh, crew members of the same department with time cards for the same week ending will all have their time cards go into the same batch. But if for some reason I wanted to stop any new time cards from coming into this batch, I can put a soft lock on it, which means any other time cards created for this department this week ending will go into a new batch uh, so as to not disturb my existing batch that might be in flight or uh, I might be working on figuring something out. Maybe I have to follow up on a few things uh, to match it with the production report or something like that. Then once we're ready to review our batch, we can go to review batch here. We'll be able to select our time card. Just like on Start Plus, if you joined us before, our yellow fields are going to be our required fields here. So we will require a work location. And you'll see we've actually completed all required fields uh, and we are able to submit this time card for approval. But there's a couple extra things that we can still do on this time card. We can see here that the crew member said, remember a higher rate this week. We see that notified by the uh, little comments icons on these days. So we know we need to look into uh, what these comments could be. And we're able to see here that Regina department, our department head was uh, wrote that the higher rate was approved for the week. So uh, assuming we know what the rate is, we'll be able to go ahead and just set that re-rate here for that week, whatever it might be. Keep in mind, hours plus does have this master row here where you're able to manipulate all values in a column to make things a little faster for you. You can use that master column as well to update things like account coding. So you'll see it populate to all days here. If we needed to change this occupation code for the day, we were talking about re-rates before, we could always bump this person up as well. Keep in mind, we are actually getting a notification here that's just a uh, notification to let us know uh, that our hours will be paid at straight time because we are um, changing the, uh, the parameters outside of the schedule letter. In the event that you have questions about that, please feel free to contact our support team and we're able to uh, help you make the appropriate adjustments. We're also able to do things like splits here. We do have a variety of splits available for you. You can split based on units of time, just units in general. So that would be hourly units and numbers of meal penalties, uh, as well as percentages of times. If you choose percent, you could choose to split your account codes between a day. If you wanted to choose all just straight down the middle, you can choose hours type all, and then just say 50% and choose whatever account code you'd like for that. However, there are some uh, other cool ways that you can split out your account codes here. We're able to, for example, split out all meal penalties. So we can choose a meal penalty split. 
we can say 100% of our meal penalties, please split out to account code 2190. And uh, furthermore, we are able to paste this split to our other days as well, or not paste it if we'd like as well. And we'll see a ring around these days indicating that the splits have been successfully added to those dates. Finally, uh, you'll notice here the combined check column. I always like to point this out. Combine check, uh, a value of yes, why, will combine all of your values on the check here if we had a reimbursement. Actually, uh, I, actually we'll look at this when we, when we get to our, our next time part with reimbursements. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep you waiting for that one just a little bit because I think it looks a little prettier when we do it that way. So we'll go <laughs> ahead and we can save and calculate this time card. And then we'll get a notification that the time card has been updated and we'll be able to see it broken out down below. We're then able to submit that time card for approval if we'd like. And that time card has now been submitted uh, for approval. We'll move on to our next time card here. That's great. Alex, would you like us to, to get into some questions now or do you have some let's more? Let's get into like it. All right, let's do it. Let's get into it. Oh, NDB, actually, since we got the question about NDB, let me go ahead and show you uh, how we can accommodate NDB. You'll notice any yes. uh, fields you don't see listed out here, we do have the additional field section. You, we do have a variety of things available to you in this field. Keep in mind, it may look a little different depending on your production company here. You can choose to do NDB outs and NDB ins if you don't want to do the NDB on and off, or you can just do a straight indicate that there is an NDB that day. And then check whichever day you want to add that NDB to. All right, now let's open up the floor for questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, thank you now for that, I'm ready. That was, that yes, was now I'm ready. I you can't rush helpful. me. You can't rush me. <laughs> No, that's Sorry, not Alex. <laughs> no, no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Okay. All okay, right. Great. So let's see. Laura has a question. Um, does a department head approver need to be the same person as the time card creator for the department? In other words, can a coordinator be able to submit time cards for 10 people, but a different person like the department head be the designated approver for the department? Alex, I don't know if you want to take that one or shall I? Yes, yes. So um, directly, uh, what what we would do is we we call the role a department head role and in, in within the context of hours plus, but keep in mind that that doesn't need to be held by your true department head for uh, this project. So that department head role could be assigned to, like you said, that coordinator or, or someone like that. And your your true department head could be pushed uh, put in the approval process somewhere after the payroll accountant. Keep in mind, we can only have one department head in between the, or one department head role in between the crew member and the payroll accountant. But we can add that other approver, that other departmental, or department head approver after uh -huh. the payroll accountant in here. Yep, it's very configurable. And we just like, to your point, yep. Alex, we just, those are what are the roles that we call them, but we can certainly mix and match depending upon how the production is or a particular department is, right? And that's what makes ours plus super configurable in that way. And we, we just work with the production to, to, um, to facilitate that. Okay, great. Um, this one's kind of a, a simple but important question um, from an anonymous attendee. What about crew without email? Uh, or do they simply now, are they required to have an email uh, in this new digital age? Yeah, yeah, they are required. That's an easy one, but um, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's important. Easy but important. Yeah, no, it's a very important question. They do require an email. And, and, um, and so it's just a simple, just create a, a quick Gmail, um, you know, for that crew member. And, right. um, and they can, you know, begin using the system and start registering. But yes, email is required. 
makes sense to me. Uh, Stephanie's got some great questions today. So she's going to follow up uh, on the box. Uh -huh. Inventory is separate from the weekly invoice since it has to be dated specifically for that week. Mm -hmm. Is it available to be submitted with the time card? So, so the box, oh, okay, so she's asking about the box rental form. Is the form available uh, to be submitted with a time card? So yes. that typically, so that's actually a good distinction. So we're talking about the box rental form, which typically we see in the start packet, and that gets handled in um, start plus. And then the weekly invoice, which is what I was referring to and Alex was referring to, is something that gets attached to the weekly time card. Um, and that's where the crew member can go ahead and attach that invoice each week and make that determine. And then that determines whether it's taxable or not taxable. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Um, so Donna would like to know, may we, as the payroll accountant, name uh -huh. patches whatever we want? Yes, you can. Um, that is something that we, when we do the implementation part of the product, you can go ahead and let us know what are the different batches or the departments that you want them named, how you want them grouped together. And then again, as Alex showcased, you have the flexibility to move time cards as well. Okay, great. And this might sort of be along those same lines, but um, another anonymous attendee was wondering, can the payroll accountant see the time cards by department rather than the whole production lumped into one? Let's say, I'm sorry, repeat that again for me. So can the, can the payroll accountant see the time cards by department rather okay. than higher production lumped all together? Yeah, and that again is, is simply um, how we've uh, designed it. So if you want it, you know, within your department, let's say grip, if you want to do camera, you can separate those out by the department and name them that way. Or if you're a smaller production with very few crew, you can just simply batch them into one, which is production. And that's just what we do for the demo, but that's all very, that's all customizable in the product. Okay, copy. All right. Yeah, absolutely, right. I think it's great. Um, do we have time for any more? Yeah, Alex is busy in the system over here, working his way through. <laughs> I was like, what? He's just crazy. He's a happy time card um, approver. You know. Yeah, we'll just let Alex go. That's fine. <laughs> yes, let's do that. We have two more. We have the reviewer role, and then we're going to um, have a couple more time for a little bit more questions. So let's take one more. Okay, perfect. So for now, Stephen um, is asking, since we were shut down, can we get access to hours plus at this time so we can get used to the system? He's submitting four time cards weekly at this point. Uh, that's a great question and something I actually highly recommend. If you're only doing um, right now, you're kind of in that in-between spot before your production resumes and you're doing four time cards a week, we absolutely think it's a great idea to start hours plus. Um, and it's a great way to get A, used to the system, understand how it works, so that when your production does come back, you'll be able to really take it on um, with all the crew members. Um, so the answer is yes, and we'd love to have you on board. Fantastic. All right, great. All right, um, I think, is there any more questions, Sarah, or we can go now into the reviewer role? I think we'll go into the reviewer role and then see what we have to finish it up. Let's do it. All right, Alex. Alrighty, I'm just going to approve this time card. I want to push it along with my batch here for my reviewer. Great, and now that we see both of our time cards are approved, we'll go ahead and log in as our reviewer. So the reviewer role, we call it a reviewer. Um, it is an approver. Um, and you can have typically one or two or three reviewers after the payroll accountant, um, but we're only going to showcase obviously one. We don't need to repeat it. Um, but it is something that it is, once again, customizable in the system. You let us know whether or not you need, you know, your, produ your production accountant, let's say a UPM, and then maybe a studio executive that will want to review the time cards before um, they're fully approved. Exactly. Uh, so what uh, Ivana says is true. We are able to accommodate up to three reviewers. Keep in mind, all of their views will be exactly identical to what we're seeing here as well. So you're not missing anything by not seeing those other uh, reviewers as part of the process here. Yep. We are able uh, to display this batch. We display some high level information here. Keep in mind, you can click any of these to sort with them. Right now we have same account code for them uh, as the basic account code. So that won't do anything, but we can sort by allowances sort by hours, sort by wages, et cetera. We're also able to see here that there are comments indicated on this 
time card. We see here the uh, red icon uh, indicating that other comments previously exist on this. Otherwise, if we didn't see the red, we would still be able to click to add comments. Marianne, I know you asked about the, uh, from the payroll accountant perspective, and I'm so sorry I didn't show you this. It is going to be the exact same process for the payroll account payroll account role, you'll be able to click to add comments and see them listed in this chain as well. Keep in mind your cast and crew payroll coordinator is able to view those comments as well. So you can say something like higher rate this week, uh, you know, maybe I'm a UPM or exec. I'll go ahead and approve that time card if I want. Now keep in mind, there's also more detail I can see here. I can uh, hit my show time card drop down. We'll be able to see a broken time card out. All of our various hours here, our units, our pay codes here for our different pay types. We're able to see the account code split that we did with our meal penalties here. So we're able to see any of our splits coded out here. And we're also able to see once again, that reimbursement, we can see that an inventory list was attached. If we wanted to dive in deeper into maybe some of the transactions that have happened on this specific time card, I can go in a little further and see once again that time card view as the crew member submitted it. I can click my inventory list to download and then be able to verify uh, the legit legitimacy here. <laughs> Absolutely, it's important and part of the step. Approves it. And there we'll see we've actually completed reviewing all of our time cards in that batch. Keep in mind batches are submitted holistically to cast and crew. So they don't come over to cast and crew until your whole batch has been approved. Uh, another good reason that if you have those straggler time cards, just split them out into your straggler batch so you can come back to them later. And we'll see here in our history tab, that batch that we just uh, submitted, we're able to see the status that it was submitted to cast and crew. We're able to download our batch report for that batch from within hours as well. Keep in mind this batch report can also be sent over to Cast and Crew Studio, which we'll showcase to you in just a minute here. You're able to see the crew member's electronic signature, the full audit trail of this uh, time card. You'll know, see here our other time card as well in this batch. So you'll see as many time cards as you have in this batch in your batch report. We are also able to generate a few different reports here. We have a spot audit report. That's great. If you want to check crew member in and out times in a date range, you would just select your date range that you wanted to see in and out times for. If you wanted it from June all the way to next week here. And then you would just be able to run that report and export a CSV file here. We do also have the open batch report and batch line item report. I'm not going to uh, share those here uh, just for sake of time. So your open batch report, very straightforward, will show you what batches you still have open. And uh, your batch line item report will show you uh, notes attached to time cards and wages in a uh, set time period. So we're able to see here that those listed in and out times for our crew members on our specific dates. And then another really handy report, especially uh, moving into the digital world here, is that pending time cards report. In the event that you have time cards that maybe aren't uh, submitted to you yet or haven't been, um, uh, haven't been fully yep. submitted by the crew member, you're able to see here the crew member who has those pending time cards, what the status is, and uh, which week ending those time cards are for as well. Awesome. What I like to suggest to do is to actually set this as a, an automatic recurring schedule report here for myself. So I go into schedule and I can schedule any of these four reports. Schedule reports, choose pending time cards. And I like to have this send, uh, you know, I'll, I'll add my recipients who I want it, uh, who should receive it. And then you can set your start date to it. Maybe you process payroll on Tuesdays. So you want to get that pending time card report on Monday, the day before, so you have a chance to follow up on those pending time cards. So we could start it on the sixth here. We could repeat it every day if we want to do every one day, or we could do it every week by doing every seven days. And we can set a, an end date for it as well. Fantastic. 
So Alex, we've got a few minutes left before the end and I want to make sure we answer a couple more questions from our audience. And, um, and then we will um, start to wrap it up. So Sarah, take us away. Yeah, sounds good. We do have some great questions to get today. Thanks, everybody. Um, so Kate is asking, does the program work across all platforms, all web browsers, a variety of phone systems? Yes, um, so it does work on all browsers. We do recommend Chrome as the browser of choice, but yes, it does work on all browsers. And yes, you can use Hours Plus, especially for the crew. It is mobile friendly. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so this anonymous attendee would like to know is, uh, is that TC required to be sent to the crew members for approval after created by the department head? Alex, would you like to take I'm that sorry, one? could you repeat that one? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So is, is the time card required to be sent to the crew member for approval after the department head has created it? Uh, not always. So we can allow department heads to have the submit emergency time card option where they'll be able to submit that time card without the crew member's consent. Keep in mind though, because uh, one of the great values of Hours Plus is getting that electronic signature, that valid electronic signature from the crew member stating that those are their times worked. So when submitting an emergency time card, you're no longer getting that digital signature. Right. Okay, let's see. Sounds good to me. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, does the program load all contracts? For instance, in New York, we have prevailing meal penalties. Is it able to calculate that? Uh, yes, we are able to calculate prevailing meal penalties. Keep in mind that the hours to gross calculator is incredibly advanced and functions on a number of different rules between uh, work state, work city scenarios, uh, all of your various union status scenarios, even down to specific schedule letter scenarios. So it's, it's a very advanced calculator that can uh, take a lot of what you throw at it. Okay, that's very really helpful. <laughs> That's good to know. Good to know. Uh, so Christina um, has a good question. Can a department head also be the first reviewer, as in the production accountant approving their depart, excuse me, department crew time cards, but also reviewing all time cards before removing them on to final approval? I'm sorry, can you say that last part one more time? It was sure. a very long question. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was a two-parter. Yeah, so basically um, they want to know if the department head can also be the first reviewer, as in the production accountant approving their department crew time cards, but then also reviewing all time cards before moving them on to final approval. Gotcha. So it sounds like they want the production accountant in two roles, right? Prior mm -hmm. to and then um, at, before the payroll accountant role and then once again after. And um, the answer is yes, you can do that. Um, if you would like. And then as you start to see the system um, go through the process and, you know, and see how it breaks, um, it's, it, it really does kind of come down to the point of where you just want to be in one role. Um, because what you're verifying in the department head role is simply the hours um, that the employee submitted. But the answer is yes. Should you want it that way, it can be done. Okay, great. Um, we got one more, Sarah. <laughs> okay, okay. Woo, no pressure. Or I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> it's coming time. Okay, got it. Let's see. So um, Tracy wants to follow up and say, I'm sorry if I missed this, but are crew members automatically invite, invited to do Hours Plus once they're onboarded via Start Plus, or is that a separate invitation? Um, yeah, Alex, would you like to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely great question. They're not automatically invited to Hours Plus, uh, even if they do Start Plus. Our reason for this is, is that in order to be able to create time cards, we do want to make sure that the right people on the team are able to create time cards. So we allow you to control who is on Hours Plus and who is not on Hours Plus for those security reasons, where you're able to invite them. There could be a scenario where maybe you did not want to invite someone for digital time cards. Right. Okay. Great. All right, everyone. So, um, Alex, thank you so much for demoing the product today. We appreciate that. Thank you. We'll go ahead and jump back into our last notes here. Perfect. So, um, everyone, if you're ready to get started on our products, our customer success and implementation team are ready to help. 
We, um, we do recommend that you prepare for a smooth process. And a couple of those things are one, um, to make sure you complete the project setup in payroll, that's critical. And as we mentioned before, you can use Hours Plus separately or in conjunction with Start Plus. Um, in addition, prep your department list or your batches. Um, we can utilize whatever you've done in Start Plus or even in PSL as a guide, and then you can adjust accordingly. And then last but not least, consider what your requirements are for an approval workflow. And so we are here to help you navigate COVID-19 requirements for a contactless production. Our solutions are available to you now so that you can create and run your digital production office. And thank you so much to everyone today for joining us. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks everyone. That is the end of our webinar. And thanks to Ivana, Alex, and Sarah for that look at Hours Plus and digital time cards. If you have any further questions regarding the cast and crew production suite, we welcome you to contact us directly by emailing sales at castingcrew.com. We look forward to seeing you at future webinars and until then, stay safe.